repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Come on and stand to your feet. Let's give God a praise and let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, let us serve the Lord with gladness. Let us come before his presence with singing. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord for he is good and his mercies endureth forever. Come on and give God your best praise and join in with the choir. Let's glorify the name Lord Jesus Christ. And then stay Hallelujah. right there. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet there. Praise him. Ready to glorify him? Woo! Woo!
You're welcome into this place, Holy Spirit. Magnify your name, Jesus. You're welcome, Holy Spirit. Come into this place. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Oh, bless the Lord. Blessed is a man that trusted in him. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Come into this place. Ha. 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 Bow down to the King of Kings. Ah, the Lord of Lords. Jehovah Jireh. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Stay in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Hallelujah. Get in the secret place of the Most High. Come under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Know that the Lord is your refuge. He's your God. Trust in him and lean out on your own understanding. Let us all stand to our feet as we prepare ourselves to go before the throne of grace. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Whatever you believe God for, whatever you are trusting the Lord for, have expectations knowing that he's able to do what you ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's anybody that have a sickness in your body, know that he is able to heal. Hallelujah. If anybody is uh, oppressed with any situation or circumstance, know that he's able to deliver. And somebody may come with a broken heart, but he heals the broken hearted. Amen. And I speak not only, amen, to the sanctuary here at the Living Church, but also out on live stream. Amen. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or even think. Hallelujah. We're going to go into spiritual warfare. You know, prayer is warfare. It is spiritual warfare because the enemy is trying to block. The enemy is trying to stop. Hallelujah. But we're not letting the enemy stop anything here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I don't have time to be arguing with the devil. The Bible says, submit yourself before the Lord and resist him and he will flee from you. If the enemy is oppressing your home, resist him and he will flee from you. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everybody's home in Jesus name. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everybody's family, even your extended family. The blood is still prevail. We're going to fight the good fight of faith today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we're going to take up the shield of faith. We are Christian soldiers. We are in the army of the Lord. The kingdom of God suffereth violence, but the violent taketh by force. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Father, we love you today. In the name of your beloved son, Jesus to Christ, we come before you. We bless your name. We worship you. We honor you. The psalmist said, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showed thy hand it works. You are awesome, O oh God. You are unique. You are you wonderful. You are the greatest phenomena that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. You are the only one that is qualified to be an all-sufficient Savior. You are the roadway of righteousness. You are the highway of holiness. You are the gateway of glory. You are God. And beside you, there is no other. And so we praise and we magnify your name. We glorify you. You are wonderful. You are the everlasting father. You are the prince of peace. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the savior of the world. And God, we bless you today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray that you would have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins and wash us with the blood of Jesus. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we just thank you today. 
For we realize, oh God, that the weapons of our warfare, they are not made with human hands. But they are mighty through you, oh God, to the pulling down of strongholds. We're going to pull down some strongholds today. Every evil imagination, oh God, we bring it into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We know according to your word that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. We serve notice on these spiritual wicked demons now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus there's a power that exceeds your power in the name of Jesus hallelujah so we hallelujah we grow up all lawns with truth today we speak truth not a lie we speak truth for your word is true you are the truth the way in the life hallelujah in the name of Jesus we pull on the breastplate of righteousness our righteousness is of a filthy rag we need your righteousness oh God you justified by us by the blood of Jesus and you declared us righteous we put on that that breastplate oh how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel and bring glad tidings we shot up on our feet the preparation of the gospel of peace hallelujah for there in the gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith it's impossible to please you without faith so we take up the shield of faith to quench the fiery dust of the wicked it oh God in the name of Jesus hallelujah and we put on the helmet of salvation oh God we thank you my God for we are saved by grace not of works lest any man should boast we thank you my God for saving us we thank you for delivering us we thank you my God for setting us free by the power of the spirit of God we take up the sword of the spirit which is the word of God hallelujah help us to study and show ourselves approved unto you a workman that need not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of God that we may meditate it on a day and night and be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in this season, oh God. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Help us to walk in the spirit so that we will not give heed to the dictates of the flesh in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We pray for our pastor today. We pray for our elders today. We pray for every saint of God. We pray for their families. We pray a special prayer for Mother Johnson today. Bring healing her in her body in the name of Jesus. Bring deliverance. Somebody wants to be saved. Somebody wants to be delivered. Somebody wants to be set free. The blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over this service. We cast out every devil. We cast out every demon. Everything that is not like you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we praise you now. And we bless your name, hallelujah. Lord, we give your name the glory and honor. We pray that the word of God, when it comes forth today, that it comes forth with power, that it comes forth with victory, and that somebody will be saved, somebody will be healed, somebody will get baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise now, and we give you glory now, and we give you honor. Come on and lift up your voice and clap your hands now, and give the Lord your best praise. Praise him until you feel better. Praise him until you get the job you want. Praise him until your wayward child come home. Let everything that have breath, let everything that have breath, come on and give God your best praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. As you're still standing on your feet, praise the Lord. You will take your Bibles in your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and amen to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 10. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10. And we're going to begin reading from verse 34 to conclude in verse 45. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have a Bible, please share with your neighbor. Amen. Everyone should be looking into the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. I'll read, and then we'll read verse 45 together. Can you say amen? Okay. Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of 
persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteous, righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hang on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God. Before of God, even to us who did eat and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him, shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost felt on all them which heard the word. Let's read verse 45 together. And they of the circumcision which believe were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Amen. Isn't it wonderful when the Holy Ghost is poured out on you? In Jesus' name, the Lord bless his word in your hearts in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we're going to prepare ourselves for giving unto the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. Come on, let's give God a praise for this opportunity to give. Amen. And let's also remember, giving is a part of worship. Amen. This is what you're doing now is worship. Take a moment, praise the Lord, and, and get your tithes and your offerings together. And we're going to give, as Elder Doster was preaching, the teaching this morning during Sunday school, we're going to give how? Cheerfully. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's give God the praise as we prepare ourselves to give. And we're going to follow the directions of the ushers in the back. And please be led accordingly as we come cheerfully and give in Jesus' name.
us all stand. Lord, we bless you and we thank you in the name of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, for blessing us to be able to give to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen.
blessing from you. One more time, a blessing from you, God. A blessing from you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, keep your hands together. Come on, put them together. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Amen. A blessing from you. The song says, my hands are lifted up. Most important. Is your hands lifted today? Is your heart lifted today? Your heart lifted. Your heart lifted. Song says, A blessing from you. We honor the Spirit of Christ today, the head of the church, you that are listening to us by way of live stream. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Truly, the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth is enduring to all generations. Let us all stand just for a few moments. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. It is the Lord's good pleasure to give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him. As Jesus says, it is a good gift. My heart is lifted up and my hands are lifted up. Every head bowed, all wise and eternal God. We're so grateful for this day that you have given us. A day, Lord, that we have never experienced before. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather today. We ask you now, Lord, to bless and make us a blessing as only you can. Move, Lord, by the power of your spirit. We honor you today. We thank you today. Give us words of life, words of comfort. In the matchless name, Jesus Christ, let us all say amen. Who would remain standing at this time, remain standing, should have heard the scripture reading in your hearing. We want to take a text from Acts, the 10th chapter, verses 43. Acts 10, verse 43. Ten, verse forty-three. You have it. Say amen. The scripture says, "While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. The Holy Spirit fell on all." those who heard the word. The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. I want to speak to you for a few minutes today. Holy Spirit, fall on all of us. Praise the Lord. Everybody, just for a few minutes, just, just talk to the Holy Ghost. He's still in charge of the church. The church still belongs to the Holy Ghost. He haven't made anyone... CEO, the Holy Spirit is still in charge of the church. Irregardless of who's doing what, who's saying what, the Holy Spirit is still in charge of his church. Everybody, just speak to the Spirit for a moment. Even if you just close your eyes, just, just forget about anybody that's in your vicinity. Holy Spirit, fall on all of us. Hallelujah. Just keep, just keep your eyes closed. If there was ever a time that we needed the Holy Spirit to fall on all of us, that time is now. The craziness is not just in the world. The craziness has crept into the professing church. Holy Spirit, fall on all of us. On all of us. 
I can't do this without you. I can't begin to be holy without you. Our gathering is a waste of time without you. Our coming together is a waste of time without your presence, without your anointing. God, I could do without everything. I could do without the music. I could do without the song. I could do without the semantics. But Holy Spirit can't do without you. Fall on all of us. You may be seated. Holy Spirit, fall on all of us. We're going to continue our walk through the book of Acts. And if you've been following us, you can just anticipate what's coming next. If you're in Acts, the 10th chapter, I hope you are reading and following the word. I don't want anybody assuming that what Pastor Parson is saying is right. I know this is a different time, but whenever you come to the house of God, bring your, your paper Bible, your tablet, your phone, or whatever you can to follow along in the Word because your salvation is critical. The Bible says, save yourself from this perverted generation. And we're still living in a perverted time, no matter how you put it. Holy Spirit, fall on us. Throughout the book of Acts, the, the book of Acts, in, in summary, is the historical record of the church and what the church is supposed to be like. The church is not an enlightenment period, 18th century, 19th century phenomenon. The church is a first century phenomenon, the New Testament church, that Jesus birthed out of his suffering, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. The only point that makes church any different from any other philosophical position is the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. If that's not true, we can all padlock the doors and go to the Panthers game. Because nothing else matters. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, everything that goes on in the church is in vain. But he did rise. Not even his enemies, and not even the historical records of, of Pliny, Josephus, and those who wanted to have nothing to do with Christianity wrote historical records, and they talked about one named Christos, who his followers went to the Death, declaring that they had eaten with him and seen him and walked with him after he had been crucified and buried in the grave. Jesus rose from the dead. That's why we're here today. Jesus rose from the dead. As we, we move on through Acts, that the Holy Spirit is working in the church as Jesus is working through the Holy Spirit, guiding and leading the church. People are being delivered from they're sin. They're being saved into the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on. But God is still building his kingdom right here on earth. As we get to chapter 10, up until this point, it's just been uh, limited to Judaism, and those followers of Judaism. But at this point, the Holy Ghost is about to go viral. The world is about to break out beyond just Judaism. Jerusalem, and now it's getting ready to go to the Gentiles, all non-Jews. God is about to fulfill the promise of Abraham recorded in Genesis 12 and 3, 6,000, almost 5,000 years earlier. You're going to be a blessing, and in you, you're going to bless all nations. Here we are, a man, the house of Cornelius, a Gentile, they're about to receive the Holy Ghost. Now, this is not an occasion that was well planned and thought out by people. We're in a time where we, we, we plan uh, for worship service. We plan uh, for church, whether singing or choirs, etc. We 
prepare ourselves. But this just wasn't the case when the church began. Yet people were saved and delivered from their sin, sometimes by the thousands. This is not an occasion that was well planned and thought out by human leadership in the church, but something that was orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. This occasion that you read about in your scripture reading today, it was filled with shock and uncertainty, doubt, even reluctancy from the leaders, even suspense of what God was going to do. I want to share just three components of a word spoken about Jesus that led up to the Holy Spirit falling on all who heard the word. I want you just to think within your mind and think within your spirit today. Usually I'm kind of running around, moving around. I'm going to try my best just to talk through this today. I'm going to give you no guarantees now, but I'm going to try my best to stay in this space here and talk about this today. I said I'm going to try. Now we, uh, this is this 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 what's about to happen in, in Acts 10 is just revolutionary. It's uh, it's evolutionary. It's it's just amazing. Not only, not only the spirit-filled folk, the people that was enjoying church didn't see this one coming. Although the Bible had talked about it over and over again. I mean, and many times people are, are still shocked about things that they know the Bible has already said. I'm not shocked about what's happening in Washington and Ukraine and, and Hamas. I'm not shocked by none of that. I'm not shocked by earthquakes and divers places and global warming and all of this stuff. Amazon burning down, the, the ice caps melting down. I've asked God to let me be able to go to Alaska before it all goes away. God, but I'm not shocked that this is happening. The Bible is clear that these things are going to come to pass. But you ain't got to worry about that being the end, because Jesus said the end is not going to come until the gospel is preached throughout the whole world. That means that you don't know when it is, so you just need to be ready all the time. Uh, but, but I do want to share three components of the words spoken about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit falling on all who heard the word. The three things, the messenger who spoke the word, you can write these down. The messenger who spoke the word, that was Peter. The essence of the spoken word. And finally, those who heard the word. The message who, who spoke the word essence of the spoken word, and then those who heard the word. Now the messenger who spoke the word was Peter, Acts 10, 34. Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth I perceive that God shows no partiality or no respect of person. Now, often you hear that talked about within the church where people are saying, well, people with positions and are elevated into different areas, there's no respect of a person. And it's often talked about in the context of church. But whenever Peter spoke this, it was in the context of people who were in the church already and people who knew nothing about the church. He said, every, he, he was said I perceive that people who have the mindset of righteousness and, and just want to be right towards God. He knows God is no respect of a person. Sometimes in church, we tend to forget that Jesus didn't just die for the church, but God so loved the world. John says that he is the propitiation or the substitute for our sins, but not our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. God loves the world, church. This is God's world. Well, you, well it don't look like way well, you know stuff don't ever look like what it really is. But, but God is getting long suffering, not willing that any should perish. He's giving evil in this time just to work out his course because evil don't pose no problem for God. In spite of all the evilness, God still has people who love him. God loves the whole world, and he's taken his world back. And he promised that he's going to renovate his world. He's made that promise. He said this thing is going to pass away, but his word is going to stand. And so here, the messenger, and when he starts to talk, in the gospel is where we learn that Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom. So it's fitting that Peter is the one that speaks on this day. Matthew 16 and 19, Jesus tells them, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, or whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And in other words, whatever God is doing in heaven and you are speaking on earth, 
God is going to confirm and validate that. But it's already God's word is settled in heaven. And Jesus came that that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That will began to be done whenever Jesus walked around and did doing good, healing and chasing demons and then was crucified and died and was buried and rose again. And now he is, he is Lord of Lord, head of head. We're not going to crown him Lord later. Oh, that happened on the cross with the crown of thorns. Now he's on the right hand of the throne of God, powers and the principalities making an accession for us. And he, we are his witnesses on earth to continue to spread the gospel of the kingdom, which is about Jesus Christ. And but Peter was given the keys. And we're learning in Luke 11 and 15, write that down. Luke 11 and 15, if you've ever asked the question, what are the keys to the kingdom? We learn Jesus says to those who had the knowledge of the word of God, woe to you lawyers, uh, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter in yourself. And those who were entering in, you hinder. Keys of the kingdom has a lot to do with the knowledge of how it is to get in the kingdom, what is required to get in the kingdom. Having been given the keys is why Peter is the lead spokesman on the day of Pentecost and, and throughout beyond that and now in Acts 10 at the house of Cornelius. Yet Peter is clear that he does not know why he is at the home of Cornelius in the company of Gentiles, which was a no-no for Orthodox Jews. And he would not be there if God had not summoned him to go there. For Peter, the messenger, obeying the word of God was, was an obligation, not an option. Everybody say an obligation, not an option. Every disciple, including you and I, must treat obedience to the word of God as an obligation not an option, something that I can listen to if I want or choose to do if I want to or don't want to. Uh, this makes every spirit-filled disciple a potential messenger of the gospel to lead someone to faith in Jesus Christ. If you are a spirit-filled believer today, you have what it takes to tell somebody about Jesus and what Jesus done for you. You are a witness. You are a walking witness if you never open your mouth. Amen. And let your, let your light shine with the spirit filled believer. You don't have to make your light shine. All you have to do is get your self flesh out the way and your light will shine. You won't have to tell people who you are. You won't have to, you won't have to wear a t-shirt or a hoodie that says I'm saved. When you walk in the break room, folk will know you saved. And sometimes they'll quieten down and stop talking about what they were talking about. At first, you thought something was wrong with you. You thought you didn't brush your teeth or something. When everybody started moving away from you when you got in the room, then you realized that there was an air about you. The Holy Spirit resonating from you. And some people are so intimidated, they start attacking you. Well, ain't nobody holy than like that. And ain't nobody doing that. And I go to church too. It ain't about whether you go to church or not. It's whether or not you are a witness for Jesus. Spirit-filled believer. Y'all can put this on TikTok and blog this on Facebook and tell somebody that God still has somebody that's serious about him. A spirit-filled believer. And Peter, not, uh, like Stephen and Philip before him, who neither were labeled apostles or ministers, yet the ministered the word about obedience to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Peter was being literally led by the Holy Spirit. It, 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 he, it, listen, every spirit-filled believer needs to treat the Holy Spirit, the obedience to the word of God, as an obligation. The Bible says in Acts 10, 19, while Peter thought on the vision, we talked about last week, while he thought on the vision, the Spirit said to him, three men are coming, arise, get down, and go with them. Then Peter went down to the men which would come from Cornelius' house. He was moving because the Holy Spirit was speaking to him. 10 and 23, then called them and enlarged them, and on the morrow Peter went away with them. Acts 10, 28 and 29, when Peter gets to the house, he said unto them, you know how that it is unlawful for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you 
without gainsay, without hesitation, without doubting, without questioning, as soon as I was sent for. I ask, therefore, what intent that you have. Yes, Peter treated obedience to the Holy Spirit as an obligation, not an option. He Listen, he gave a disclaimer when he got there because he had people with him, and he kept wanting them to realize, now, I know you know I don't supposed to be here, right? You know I don't supposed to be taking company with Gentiles or definitely not going to sit down and have table fellowship with you because the word might get back to the rest of the church that I've been hanging out with people that are unclean. And, and you can hear the urgency and the concern in his voice where he says, now, why did you send for me? And, you know, AKA, now, let's just get to the real point. Why am I here? Why am I here? Let's just get through this because I don't want to be here long. Why am I here? Listen, when obedience becomes an obligation, you will not hesitate to obey the spoken or the written word of God. And that the Holy Spirit fell on all of them that heard the word because the messenger of the word treated obedience to the word as an obligation. I want to speak to you, saints. When you, hear, when you see this word of God, when you hear this word of God, don't treat it like it's an option whether you can listen to it or not listen to it. You know, don't treat church like I'm just here, but I'll be glad to get out of here so I can do the next thing. Listen, you need to, I'm, I'm talking to spirit-filled and non-spirit-filled disciples. Listen, if you, if you hear the word of God, you need to treat it like an obligation to obey it. Now, Jesus said, for those who treat the word like an option, Jesus says, Matthew 7, 26, everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them would be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it fell, and great was the fall. James 1.23 says, for if anyone, James 1.23, if anyone is hearing the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. And for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. And that's like coming and hearing the word of God, not because Pastor Parsons said it, but because you saw it for yourself. And then walking away and saying, now what's next? And forget totally about what you just heard. Amen. My God. He said, Jesus goes on to say in Matthew 7 and 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will be like him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Might have say I'm built on the rock. The rain descended, the flood came, the winds blew, and beat on the house. Somebody feeling some wind right now. Somebody feeling some floods right now. Somebody's feeling the the rain on their life right now. Hallelujah! But and it did not fall, for it was found on a rock. I don't care what you're going through right now. I don't care what you're experiencing right now. When you treat the word of God like an obligation, you know that no matter what hell I go through, I got an obligation to live saved. I got an obligation to stay saved. Church is not an option for me. Church is not something I have. Church is who I am. Hallelujah. I have an obligation to do what God called me to do. You ain't got to give me nothing to preach the word. Paul said, woe up to me if I don't preach the word. My God, you got an obligation to talk about Jesus when the Spirit of God is inside of you. You can't sit on fire and neither can you sit on the fire of the Holy Ghost. My God, Peter, the Bible says in 1034, Peter opened his mouth. Now that phrase alone indicates that the messenger of the word, Peter, even he wasn't even sure what to say. But when the Holy Spirit fell on all of them, he wasn't even sure what he was supposed to say. Notice what is occurring with the messenger of the word. Leading up to this moment when the Holy Spirit fell on all of them who heard the word. Acts 10 and 17. While Peter wondered within himself what this vision meant, the men came to his house. Verse 19 of chapter 10. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said. While Peter is still trying to get the point, the Lord continues to process and prove in his point. Listen, God don't need you to understand his instruction. God don't need you to understand the Bible. Just follow his instruction without hesitation. I mean, my God, some people are trying to get all of these books to try to understand the Bible. All of these different things, the five ways to have your faith, the ten ways how to, the ten ways of how to get this and get that. 
the 20 ways of how to be prosperous. Let me tell you, the only thing you need to have favor with God is obey the word of God. Anybody who has walked with Jesus for half a moment knows that favor is better than fun. Favor is better than having money. My God, you get your money, you'll go broke. When you got favor, when you broke, you won't care about being broke. Because when you got favor, honey, God will touch folk to get you what you need. God will move on people uh, to help you. My God, you, you won't see it coming. You won't know where it comes from. Just do the right thing. Do like Cornelius. Send up your arm before God. Pay your tithes and do what you're supposed to do. Because God is watching. Uh, the, the word told Cornelius, says, your arms will come up before God. Your good deeds will come up before God like a memorial. Some of you sitting here, you got a memorial in heaven. You, you, you ain't got nothing in your bank account on earth, but your bank account in heaven is full. That's why you're sitting there with a smile on your face. Uh, you don't care about presents under the tree as long as you got the one that hung on the tree. His name is Jesus. Uh, God, I wish somebody. Hallelujah. He was thinking about what he was supposed to do, and the Holy Spirit was still working. I mean, you know, one thing I found out about that, although you may be caught by surprise, if you were paying attention, most stuff that God is doing, especially when you're a spirit-filled disciple, it's not a surprise. You, you just wasn't paying attention. I mean, notice Peter, he was caught by surprise, but it really wasn't a surprise. He ended up in the house of a tanner. Now, a tanner was somebody who worked with animals, and, and the smell used to be unclean animals too. And the smell used to be so bad, the tanner's house had to be outside the city. That's why Luke tells us that the tanner's, his business was by the seaside. Because nobody wanted him in the city because of the smell. So Peter at his house, he's in the place of an unclean person. He's in the house of an unclean place. And when Jesus tried to show him, he said, not so, Lord. I haven't eaten anything unclean. Well, you're in an unclean house. Amen. Some of you sitting here, when you're telling God to do something, God is already doing it. I mean, you, you, you're praying for stuff that you already got. I mean, you're looking for stuff, and God's saying, it's in your house. It's in your hand. <laughs> it's in your mind. My God, some of you sitting on businesses now talking about, I'm trying to be a millionaire. You're not being a millionaire five times. You just spend it all. <laughs> some of you, it's a millionaire. It's in your house. Look at somebody tell them, it's in your house. My God, start looking for it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, that's why I mean, I, I'm, I'm probably an unorthodox Pentecost preacher, but when these, when these parents said that kids playing sports and stuff, I'm fine. Go play sports, praise the Lord. My God, remember me. I don't know. You know, you might be a, a future a NFL star or something. You might be like a millionaire. All, all I need is just 10% of that million to put in tithes. That's all I need. I ain't going to stop you. I ain't mad at you, honey. You can play sports. Go play sports. Grow up, get big, run around the parking lot. Practice out here, praise God. Who knows what God is going to do? Who knows how God's going to bless you? Some of you sitting up to my own working for a retirement. Honey, just do what God said do. Just obey the word of God. Just do what God said. You don't know how God's going to bless you. You may not even need no retirement when God get through with you. Talking to somebody here today. Just obey the word of God. You sitting here trying to rationalize why church ain't for you. My God, anything that God's got. God has never, never done anything trivial, minute. My God, he, if you have to start with a baby... My God, he'll blow this thing up like he did with Jesus. My God, that's the paradox of God. Can you imagine, saints, a baby? I mean, the great Herod, the, Herod, the king Herod, is afraid of the king baby. <laughs> Trying to kill babies because he's intimidated by the king baby. My God, look at the power of God. God will take small stuff. Divinity was in diapers. My God, the God of glory. The God of glory had to have a pacifier. The God of glory had to be potty trained. Y'all need to stop listening to them songs that got you all messed up. Talking about, oh, way in a manger, no crib for a bed. Little Lord Jesus sleep on the hay. My God, no tears, he said. Listen, honey, he was a baby. If he was a baby in a straw place, in a trough of a sheep, he was crying with his eyes out. Don't tell me he was laying there like sleep in a manger. He was a baby, a real baby. But God will do something just like that. He'll take somebody who's a nobody 
Yes, in your family, the black sheep, the white sheep, or the no-colored sheep, in your family. He'll change your situation and have you running things. When people say you wasn't going to be nothing, you wasn't going to do nothing. And my God, I had teachers that said you ain't going to be nothing. Teachers who told you you were going to fail. God is counselors who told you you weren't going to fail. All they do is they put fire under your wings and you're sitting here now, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, serving God on your way to heaven, telling the devil to go to hell and you ain't join the trip. I wish somebody in here would say to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Touch your mind and tell him you don't know what God's got for me. You already looking at a miracle. Some of you sitting in church waiting for a miracle. I got your mirror honey. Get a mirror. Look in the mirror. I got your miracle. Get the mirror on your phone and look at it. And then tell yourself, thank God for this miracle. You know you're supposed to be dead. You ain't told your mama about that sex supposed to kill you. You ain't told your daddy about that alcohol supposed to kill you. The drugs are supposed to startle you. But somebody prayed for you. Had you on their mind. Took out a little time and prayed for you. You ain't sitting here because you got it all like that. You sitting here because grandmama paid for you. Great grandmama prayed for you. The slave mother prayed for you. Mama and daddy, sister and brother prayed for you. I wish somebody would tell the truth and shame the devil. Tell him I didn't get here on my own merit. I didn't get here on my own merit. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My God. Just being obedient. He didn't even know what he was doing. Peter hadn't prepared no sermon. And he hadn't took time to study. I'm studying for sermon, trying to get ready hours. My Peter woke up out of a sleep. Ain't had no message together. Ain't even thinking about preaching. He shouldn't go down there to preach, but he ain't preaching to those Gentiles. He ain't thinking about preaching to those Gentiles. He's just obeying the Holy Ghost. And just from obeying the Holy Ghost, he goes down in history with, and, and being the preacher of a major turning point of God. Honey, when you are spirit filled, don't you bear that unction. The Bible said, quench not the Holy Spirit. When you sitting in the park or sitting on the bus or sitting at your desk, don't you ignore that unction of the Holy Ghost saying, talk to your supervisor. Talk to that person. This time, you're not past this homeless person five times. And this time, the Holy Ghost says, give him something. Honey, don't, don't, don't move, don't, 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 don't you throw away that unction from the Holy Ghost. Because you might be in the midst of a turning point in your life. Peter was at a turning point in his life, and he didn't even want to go. And try to do a disclaimer when he got down there. Because he had people with him. He knew the word was going to get back. He was in the company of Gentiles. Now, here's the Peter, the messenger who brought the word, did not have a prior engagement to preach. He did not have a plans to preach, nor did he have a sermon prepared to preach. Yet when he opened his mouth, yet the Holy Spirit fell on all of them. We got this tendency now, and we got to have a certain preacher with a certain status, with a certain celebrity status, before we will hear him preach. He got to have something. And listen, saying, just because he plays sports or sung a song don't mean he's the best thing that God's got going. Y'all don't hear me here. But we're in a celebrity-oriented society. If, if a big celebrity say they love Jesus, we go running after him. And whenever your preacher been saying it for 30 years, and all of a sudden because East and West have said it, now we go, oh my God, that really is something. No, God, oh, we got we to gotta do like them to win them. Honey, if the Holy Ghost don't win them in church, my God, acting like a sinner ain't going to win them. <laughs> Singing like a sinner, changing the words of a sinner song and putting Jesus in it ain't going to fix it. If the Holy Ghost don't solve your problem, nothing going to solve it. You may be excited for the moment. You know we can cry over everything, especially people of color. We cry at the drop of our head. We cry when Michael Jackson used to say, my God, what was that he used to sing? I forgot what he used to sing. All that stuff, A, B, C, praise the Lord. Y'all just crying. The temptation said, my God, uh, my girl, and we just crying all this kind of stuff. We don't need church to cry. We just get emotional and cry. I wish somebody in here would cry under the unction of the Holy Ghost, not because a certain preacher said it, not because a certain and celebrities said it. You ought to just think of the goodness of God. It ought to bring tears to your eyes to think about where God brought you from. Look at him 
around and tell them I got my own testimony. I dance off of my own stuff. You ain't got to cry with me. I'll cry by myself. You ain't got to dance off of my power. I'll dance off of myself. I know where God brought me from. Anybody in this house know where God brought you from. I ain't talking about what you told folk. I'm talking about what you didn't tell folk. Just for a few minutes, praise God for what you hadn't told nobody. It opens. Opens. I'm gonna do like Peter. I'm doing a disclaimer right now. It ain't gonna be my fault when you start breaking out speaking in other tongues. I'm doing a disclaimer right now. I'm blessed, but it ain't my fault. I wish somebody in here would do a disclaimer right now. I got the anointer, but it ain't my fault. You might as well get in the aisle so you don't stub on nobody's feet. If I hit your feet, it ain't my fault. Do a disclaimer right now. I'm about to praise God, but it ain't my fault. I'm about to dance under your circumstance, but it ain't my fault. It ain't my fault. The Holy Ghost has been pulling me. Holy Ghost been driving me. Tell somebody I feel it, but it ain't my fault. Hallelujah. The messenger of the word. He didn't even know what he was doing. He didn't even know where he was going. Yet the Holy Ghost fell on all of them. The second thing. The messenger of the word. The second thing, the essence of the spoken word. Peter opened his mouth. Now let me park right there for a moment. Peter opened his mouth and said, and you, you, you really got to appreciate this when you look at the fact that Peter wasn't a person who was a loss for words. Even the minister for, uh, in the ministry of Jesus, he was always speaking up saying stuff. Jesus had a rebuke him one time. It got so bad one time, God rebuked him. I mean, Peter just getting rebuked left and right because he ain't got no problem talking. But listen, saying the Bible says, throughout the earthly ministry of Jesus, Peter was never at a loss for word. But a quick synopsis of I, I asked confirmed that neither was the spirit filled Peter at a loss for word. Look at the day of Pentecost, standing up and 11, and Peter said, Acts 2 and 14, Acts 2 and 38, and Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Acts 3 and 6, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Acts 4 and 8, then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said. Acts 5 and 3, but Peter said, Acts 5 and 8, 9, then Peter said. Acts 8 and 20, but Peter said. But when you get to Acts 10, Peter opened his mouth and said. But the Bible is saying, he didn't know what he was going to say. He just opened his mouth. He wasn't sure about what was going to come out. I ain't supposed to be preaching to Gentiles. Don't even supposed to be here. But he had sense enough to know that Jesus told him, record in Matthew 10 and 18, you will be brought before men and Gentiles. And don't think about what you're going to say. Just the Spirit is going to give you what to say at that moment. Listen, saints, I know you're studying. I know you're listening to tapes and CDs and all that stuff. But there's going to be a time when God is going to use you and all you have to do is just open your mouth. Preachers, I, I know preachers, I know we'll, this, this is very uncomfortable preaching. You like studying all this stuff, and then when you get to preach the sermon, God speaks to your heart and says, I ain't want you to preach that. I want you to preach something different that you hadn't even studied for. Now you got to trust on the Holy Ghost just to open your mouth. <laughs> As a spiritual believer, you will not have, you don't have to be a preacher, a teacher, or a leader. Sometimes God going to say, just open your mouth. Listen, the, 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 the essence of the word, when Peter opened his mouth, when he opened his mouth, the essence of the word that was preached was all about Jesus. You don't have to plan what you're going to say, but you can't ever lose by just talking about Jesus, just living about Jesus, just walking according to what Jesus said. When he opened his mouth, he, he just preached Jesus. Jesus Christ was sent by God to preach peace, peace to Israel. And he talked about things that they had heard about already. See, you, you can't live in America, especially with the so-called Bible Belt, and not hear nothing about God. 
There are, there are very few people who don't know nothing about God. There's a growing population that have never been in church, don't know anything. But that's still a growing population. Jesus was anointed by God and went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. And we are witnesses of all that Jesus did. The Jews killed Jesus by hanging him on the tree. But God raised him from the dead. We ate and drank with the resurrected Jesus. To him all the prophets witness through his name, whoever believes in him and receives remissions of sin. In the name of Jesus. He's just talking about Jesus. Look at somebody and tell him, just talk about Jesus. You know I'm telling you, many times we start witnessing the people, we started talking about because of what I got. God blessed me with this and that and the other thing. And folk who don't care nothing about God got this, that, the other thing, and more things than that you got. It's time that spirit-filled believers get back to just talking about Jesus. Listen, sister, I don't know how you're going to get out of that, but all I know is I know how Jesus got me out of it. <laughs> when I got out of it, I realized that Jesus rose from the dead because he was living inside of me. Man, you know, I got this habit that I can't, that I can't get rid of. I don't know how you're going to get rid of that habit, but I know how Jesus got me rid of my habit. Hallelujah. Bring it back to Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Lord, I want somebody, I want somebody, I want a, a better friend in my life. There ain't no friend closer than Jesus. Get close to Jesus and he'll give you the friends that won't take advantage of you. Just talk about Jesus. I mean, listen, I'm getting old huh? and I, and I, and I want to be married. Yes, I want to be married too, but I'm making sure I'm married to Jesus first. Expouse to Jesus. Because Jesus can't make a mistake. Honey, when you got the power of the Holy Ghost, you ain't got to look for no spouse. Lord, have mercy. Go back to the basic foundation of the Bible. The Bible said it was, God said it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. And then God knocked him out, created Eve, woke him up, and brought the woman to him. I wish God had knocked somebody else out so we can be in a long-lasting marriage. You want a long-lasting marriage, let God just knock you out. My God, when you got the Holy Ghost, you can close your eyes and say, any, many, mighty more, catch a wife by the toe. And then open your eyes and find her. Touch him and tell him, I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost. My God, when I met my wife, I told God, you need to start talking to God like a natural man. I found out it works. I just told one of my spiritual babies, literally talk to God like you're talking to a person. That's what God wants you to do. My God, when I got the desire to live again, I said, God, you know I don't have time to fool around. I don't have time to sample no women. I'm in leadership. I got to get this thing done the right time. I said, Lord, if it's going to be you, you got to do it. And I went to the MEP Center and saw Lady Parson, looked her up and down. I said, my God, that's it right there. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell me, don't take no long time when it's God. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And when I saw it, isn't she lovely? Oh, my God. I'm still looking up and down. For as I'm concerned, you can be like Adam and Eve, naked and out of shame. You ain't got to wear nothing around me. I wish somebody in here would tell the truth and shame the devil. When you got the Holy Ghost, you ain't sampling women. You ain't sampling men. You ain't playing with folk. You ain't dating for five, ten years. Honey, when it's God, you know it's God. God don't make no mistakes. You ain't, no, ain't nobody got to sample you to be in Jesus. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm too anointed to be played with. Lord, have mercy. Shake somebody and tell them, get it right the first time. I believe I will. Get the Holy Ghost first. And then obey the Holy Ghost. Do what he says. My God, I said, did I move out of this space yet, Elder Wallace? I said I wasn't going to move out of this space. He just talked about Jesus. I'm just telling you about Jesus. That's the message that moved everybody to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus lived. He suffered. He went about doing good. He's still doing good. Jesus died for our sins, rose for our sins, went to heaven to make sure that we can get rid of our sins, sent back the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus. 
We want people to break it down, pull out a thesaurus to understand what we're saying, dice it, slice it, woos us, die us, before we'll say hallelujah and raise our hand. I wish somebody would just get anointed off of the Lord is my shepherd. It's time to, to, to get back to praising God off of the Lord is my shepherd. The Bible said while Peter was still speaking, Hundred things you got to appreciate this. He didn't even finish his message. And he didn't even know why he was preaching. While he was still preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on all who heard the word. Now there were Jews there, but the Holy Ghost didn't fall on them. They were there with Peter, but the Holy Ghost didn't fall on them. Just because you're in church, that don't mean church is in you. They were there. But the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. That means you can hear the discourse, but you didn't necessarily hear the word. That brings me to the final thing here. Those who heard the word. You had the messenger of the word who didn't even know what he was supposed to be preaching. And you got the essence of the word that's just all about Jesus. He didn't talk about a whole lot of other stuff. Didn't have folks, you know, you know, people didn't have laying homes on their phone, them out, they didn't have all that kind of stuff. He just opened his mouth and talked about Jesus. But look at those who heard the word, and this is the essence of the whole thing. Those who heard the word, they were, they were God-fearing people before they came. They were God-fearing people before the Holy Spirit moved on them and said, sin for, sin for Peter. They want people sitting around talking about whether they believed in God or not. If you ain't gotten to the place where you believed in God, you know, just forget about the Holy Ghost falling on you. They were God-fearing people. They knew that God was real. And not only that, when they were anticipating, expecting God to do something, they didn't know what it was, but they know God was going to do something. I encourage everybody in here, don't you come to church another time without expecting God to do something. You don't have to know what it is. Just expect him to do something. Peter knew what, uh, Cornelius knew what he was doing. He got so excited, he went and got all his household, everybody that, that had been in his circle, and brought him in the house. He was excited about something that God was going to do. If you want the Holy Ghost to fall on you, you got to first be excited about whatever God is going to do for you. You can't come to church waiting for the preacher to pry you up. The praise team to be like the, the football team and prop you up. You can't come to church looking for somebody to get you in the mode of serving God. If you want the Holy Ghost to fall on you in corporate worship, walk through the door with a dance in your spirit. Walk through the door with a mindset, if you ain't going to get it started, I'm going to get it started. Walk through the door with a mindset know what it is but God is about to do something you ain't got to get nothing but I'm getting mine today listen I wish somebody who came here expecting God speak it out of your own mouth tell somebody I'm getting mine today I ain't leaving here without it there ain't no credit card but I'm telling you I ain't leaving here without it you got to come with an expectation and an anticipation of a celebration if you came here waiting for me to get you started, forget it. But if you came in here with a dance already in your spirit, you came through the door shouting and jumping. Somebody said, what's wrong with you? I can't wait until stuff gets started because I know God is going to do something in my life. I came here with a leg hurting, but I'm going to walk out of here healed. I came here with a backache, but God knows I'm walking out of here straightened up. Anybody come here anticipating God to do something, then celebrate right now. Don't wait for me to finish. Don't wait for me to finish. I ain't no celebrity preacher. He didn't preach no profound message, Elder Wallace. It wasn't no profound message. It was a sound message. 
If all you do is stand up here and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Y'all join me and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus saved. Jesus died for me. Jesus rose for me. Jesus loved me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, we want folk to break it down, cut it up, slice it up, and then we go home saying, boy, he didn't preach today. What I mean to tell you, I ain't got to preach for the Holy Ghost to fall. I ain't got to know what I'm talking about. If you come here anticipating a celebration, if you come here anticipating a healing, God will work in your life. Woo. I'm getting convicted here, Elder Wallace. I'm getting convicted. He didn't preach long. He didn't preach long. We ain't in church because he preached too long. Well, I ain't preaching long today. If y'all want me to cut my message down by 30 minutes, walk through the door with a dance. Y'all want me to preach five minutes, give the introduction, echologue, and the conclusion in 15 minutes? Come through the door. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm getting it before the pastor gets started. I feel you, sister. Yes, sir. The Holy Ghost fell on all who heard the word. The message wasn't profound, but, but the message was sound. And the listeners were anticipating God to do something. That is still formal. The Holy Ghost falling on all of us. Some of us can't come. That's why I'm preparing you for the cell free Sunday. What are you talking about? Well, just you guess can see. See, I know some of y'all. I've known some of y'all a long time. Some of y'all are gonna go on vacation that Sunday because you because, because see, I'm I, you know, I'm through. Some of y'all going to go on vacation because you just can't come in church without your phone. I wasn't going yesterday. I'm old as that. Preach, pastor. Preach, pastor. <laughs> preach, pastor. Bunk. Hallelujah, Pastor. Look at somebody telling Pastor wasn't born yesterday. See, I know what's going on. Now I'm not talking about the children. Chelsea just turned. I finally know her name. Her name is Chelsea. Chelsea turned 16. Chelsea was part of my inspiration for working children into my son. Chelsea come in church. You know Chelsea was in the house, but Chelsea was doing all kinds of stuff. So I just be preaching. I worked Chelsea into the sermon. I didn't even know her name. I said, that's supervised. <laughs> My baby turned 16 recently. She's as gorgeous as she can be. Give God a praise for supervising. It's a saved and loving God. Yeah. The children are going to play. Don't, don't bother. We've, we've got so identified as church. Let's see. Where's children's church? In here. <laughs> children is crying. Come on, children. Now you got your phone and you can't see it. Come on. <laughs> Man. I ain't going to that church because they don't have children's church. We have children's church. Children in church with their parents. So they can hear the word with their parents, and when they get home, they can ask their parents what the word was all about. And don't be, don't be deceived. I'm not talking to the adults now. Y'all need to leave y'all phone. But these children playing, see, children are multitask. They can hear what's going on while they're playing. I'm gonna share this last testimony, and I'm gonna close because I'm I'm preparing you for. I'm in this place. And I've been, I've been 
fill in my spirit. If God's going to give us a day, and I'm not even going to be able to preach, the spirit is going to come up high. I swear on this. We had left church one Monday. The children were small. The baby was a particular way. How many of you heard this? Share it because it's a testimony. And I learned that from some of the best theologies. And a lot of what I learned was from hermeneutics. I said, listen to my children when they leave church. They got all y'all shout down talk. <laughs> no, 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 no. Elder Wallace talked like this. No, 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 no. That ain't the way he talked. Uh, Elder Dork talked like this. Lady the person dance like this. One of them like this. No, no, one of them. Yeah. <laughs> They be, they, be, they be mocking all y'all. We were, they was going home one day, and they was in the back door. And I was going to stop them. Be quiet. Be like, man, what are you talking about? They were just fussing. Then the oldest said, boy, you can't even count. And the baby said, yes, I can count. He said, amen, 85 times. <laughs> Y'all wonder why I don't say the Lord, amen, Jesus, amen, uh, the blood of Jesus, amen. Uh, Y'all pray for me, amen. Y'all wonder why I don't say amen? All my children heard was amen. The messenger wasn't profound. Word was simple. Those who came was prepared to receive something from God. I guarantee you, and I bank on it, if everybody come in this building expecting to receive something from God, we are inundated in a celebrity culture. We come in questioning what this service is going to be about. How long the preacher is going to be. What is he going to say? Is he real? We text in the Facebook, seeing if he's out there doing something cool. We just we come with too much on our mind. If we go into this new year, let's ever try to plan. Let's just plan to when you come into the house of God. And I've already told the ministers when service is over, you stand up here for a while. I don't want the ministers talking about football or nothing until you get way away from here. This is church. This ain't the NFL. This is church. You want to talk about it? Wait till you get off the ground. Because people are going to hell by the minutes. And we need to seize every moment we gather for the Holy Ghost to fall on all of us. We don't need nobody looking saying, wonder what's going on. Right where you are. Close your eyes right where you are. And in, in anticipation. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry your patience today. But I'm telling you, I've already talked to the deacons. We're not trying to hurt nobody or injure nobody. I've already had the deacons to work out a plan of how to leave it in the lobby. And that's part of us, us beginning trying to get to the place in a culture where we come here with so much on our mind. The Lord has been dealing with me heavy about this. We need to seize this hour, two hours that we have in church to be here fully. To be here fully. Anticipating God to move. You don't come here shopping church like it's Walmart. Trying to decide whether you're going to join this church or not. You ain't got to join this church. Just be born into God's church. You don't, you don't, come, you don't have to come in and shout past the part. I'm telling you what I'm all about. I'm not trying to, to woo people into becoming a part of the church. I'm going to tell you what I'm all about. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't have a one woman, one wife, and no woman nowhere. Got nothing on me. No hugs, no nothing. My God. 
we serious about God, filled with the Holy Spirit. If, if you're looking for a dead church, this ain't it. Sometimes I give my Baptist three points, and sometimes I give my Pentecostal just run around the points. Sometimes I'm Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, Apostolic, but the majority of the time I'm Pentecostal. I run around, I dance, I jump, I sweat, I speak in tongues. So now you know all that I'm about, so you ain't got to come here and shock me no more. Come anticipating God to speak to you. And I don't have to be profound for God to speak to you. Close your eyes like they do in anticipation. If, if, you, if you're here for the first time, I want you to leave your understanding that Jesus died for you. If you could be saved. If you can't say that you are spirit-filled, and you never come to this place again, leave your understanding. God is not begging you to receive him. He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. I was coming to church this morning. I see some people walking their dogs and doing all kinds of things. I was thinking, you know, when you're in the fourth quarter of your life, everybody's thinking about eternity. Where am I going to spend eternity? You know, there might be a God. What if there is a God? You, you, you. You don't want to gamble with the fact that there may actually be a God. Right where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're gathered here today, Lord. Because the Holy Spirit is still falling on all those who hear your word. And Lord, every ear under the sound of my voice, I pray for right now. Lord, if they have sickness in their body, if there's healing in them, needs to take place. Lord, if they come here wondering today, if they just came because somebody made them come, if they just came to support their parents or to support their aunties or somebody, they just came just to support their sister, their brother, Lord, I want you to speak to their heart and let them know that they still have to be saved for themselves. They have to have a relationship with you. Lord, as we prepare to commune together, close the service out, with dining together, the way the early church went from house to house, breaking bread and fellowshipping. Lord, we go into fellowship in communion as a reminder of the fact that you came, you suffered, you died. You sacrificed your body, your blood for the remission of sins. You, 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 you did all of this so that we can have eternal life. As we commune together, Lord, maybe somebody is sick in their body. As they commune, Lord, bring about healing. Bring a fresh anointing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say amen and amen. As you remain seated for a moment, ask our ministers they will come quick. You should already have your communion. 1 Corinthians. Lord, God bless you all. Thank you very much, Pastor Paz, for that very, very powerful message. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at this time we're going to go into our communion service. Amen. Deacon Morris is walking by. If you don't have it, please make it known that you need um, the bread and the wine. Amen. In the 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, beginning at uh, verse 23. I'll just read a few here. The passage is here. For I receive of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, in which that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew proclaim the Lord's death till he come. 
And as you prepare yourselves to um, take of the, uh, the bread and the wine, just remember God loves you so much. And as Pastor Parson said, God loves the whole world. He is the propitiation for our sins, but not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Amen. And the Bible teaches us to examine ourselves, make sure that we are in the faith to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. This is an opportunity, and as he shared with us last time so beautifully, just as in a marriage relationship where there is a covenant, amen, where there is intimacy, there is a renewing of that covenant. And in the same way, when you take the cup, amen, and the, the bread and the wine, just continue to remember that you have a covenant relationship with God. He died for your sins, but up from the grave he arose. And amen, there is healing there is deliverance, amen. There's power in what we're about to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we love you today and we thank you for you were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon you and with your stripes we are healed today, God. We thank you for the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins and as we begin, oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah, as we go into this holy communion, Hallelujah. We pray, God, hallelujah, that souls will be saved, that deliverance, that healing would take places in bodies that are sick. We pray for the captives that they will be set free in the name of Jesus. We thank you, my God, for shedding your precious blood for our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you prepare yourselves now, let's just meditate for just a few moments and just reflect on what Jesus done for you. He loves you so much. He loves you. He cares for you. Every aspect of your life, he's thinking about you. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And as you take in your hands, amen, the bread, which represent his body, and as you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part with me, no life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you take the bread in your hand, and think about that this represent the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take in remembrance of what he's done for you on the cross. Together, let's take the bread in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you be in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed in the ears according to the promises of God. As you prepare yourselves to take, amen, remember on the cross of Christ, he shed his precious blood. Hallelujah. His blood dripped out of his body. Hallelujah. His blood, hallelujah, sent his plunge underneath to lose all their guilty stain. Hallelujah. Take, this is the blood of Jesus that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of him. Take it all together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, we praise you now. We thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and give God the praise. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. He's healing you right now. He's delivering you right now. He's setting the captives free right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Nothing but the blood. Don't forget the fellowship and walk out. Is that flow that makes me white as snow? Oh no, no other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. If you're in the place and if you do desire prayer, please come to the front. The ministers are here. If you desire them to lay hands on you, please come. Nothing.